Good morning and welcome to worship. Uh, it's good to be here today. It's my first time being with you, so hopefully things will go fairly smoothly. And if not, uh, we're, we're always living in Christ's forgiveness, aren't we? So we can be thankful for that. Uh, we are, I, I can introduce myself, I think, at the end. That'll be fine. Uh, let's begin with our first hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us 
draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world from the despair of death, 
by his resurrection to life, grant your faithful people gladness of heart and the hope of eternal joys through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Our first lesson usually is the Old Testament reading, but during the season of Easter, it is from the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 1 to 22. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision. Ananias! Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on the straight street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hand on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. Paul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once, he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on this name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. The word of the Lord. We'll sing Psalm 30, and you'll take note that there's a few notes before we actually begin singing.
Our second lesson is from Revelation chapter 5, verses 11 to 14. And John writes, Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands, and ten thousand times ten thousand. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Please stand in honor of our Savior. Christ Jesus has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Our gospel lesson is written in John chapter 21, verses 1 to 14. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they got nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated.
God's grace and peace are yours through Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Amen. We hear a portion of our gospel lesson from John chapter 21, verses 11 to 14. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. These are your words, Heavenly Father, sanctify us through your truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Dear redeemed in the Lord, as I studied this section for John today, I wondered why the Holy Spirit had inspired John to write this last chapter. If you read the rest of John, it appears that it basically ends at the chapter before with these wonderful words. And this is in chapter 20. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded 
but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. In other words, that Jesus, the man, is the Christ, the promised Savior, and the Son of God. And that by believing this, you may have life in his name. What more can you add to that? Well, apparently, John was inspired to say, I have another chapter left. And in that chapter, we have Jesus' third appearance of his before his disciples, at least some of them, up in Galilee. He did so to in, really to help us understand that even though Jesus was risen, his relationship with his people would remain. And it was going to be a blessing to them it would, that would continue. We have as our theme today that Jesus keeps providing. First of all, Jesus is the Lord. John wrote about it. He said it on that, in that chapter 21, and, and also all the disciples came to the same conclusion. The apostle John wrote about Jesus' ministry. You know, Luke and some of the others write about when he was young, but John basically starts his gospel right in the ministry of Jesus and how he was shown to be the Son of God and through several ways, right? He, he just knew things. He knew about Nathaniel before Nathaniel even came and met him. He could tell him, here, here's what you said under that tree. And it was like, you're the son of God. How could anyone else know that but God? Or by his words, his teaching, and by his powerful miracles, it showed Jesus to be the son of God. John is the one who records the apostle Peter, who after hearing all the teachings of Jesus said, Lord, to whom else can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe that you are the son of the living God. Now, Jesus, why would, would and, and, and Peter says that while many people are leaving Jesus, because often he did not appear as that wonderful promised Messiah or the son of God. Think of his beginning. He came as a, a little baby. He needed food and care like any other child. He went to school. No doubt as he grew, he became an assistant carpenter to Joseph. He was always known as the carpenter's son. He worked till he was 30 years old. The son of God doesn't usually do things like that. In Jesus' humility, he limited himself to one place. So, you know, if there, there's times when the disciples were looking for Jesus. We, got to, we have to tell him this, that we can't find him. We've got to go out and search for him. And it made it difficult for them to sometimes have that closeness with Jesus. And they couldn't find him. After his suffering and death, Jesus was raised and had a glorified body. He could be everywhere not just as God, but now even in his human <clears throat> person as well. And so Jesus said, I'm with you always. And where two or three are gathered, I'm there. He's here. Now, you don't see him, but he has promised to be here. And believe me, he keeps his promises. He is here. And he's anywhere in the world. And he could be everywhere at once if he wants to be. That's what his glorified body is like. Imagine if Jesus still wanted to just be physically present and how many people would be in line. The thing would probably be 10 miles long. You'd be here to Mankato <laughs> in line waiting to see Jesus. If he was only in one place at one time, if you had to come and ask him for something or needed help. But Jesus has a glorified body. He's risen from the dead and he is with you. You can call on him right now. You can call on him day or night. It doesn't matter. He is with you. He is hearing you. He will answer you as your living Savior. Jesus promised in John 14, you may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Jesus truly is risen in glory, and he promised all authority in heaven on earth has been given to me. That's his human nature. He now has that authority, just as the Son of God. 
Well, what did this mean for Jesus' disciples? The first times that Jesus appeared, remember there were two times in the upper room, one without Thomas, one with Thomas. And each time Jesus basically said, well, here I am, here's my body. Oh, uh, I'm going to show you that I'm alive. I'm going to eat food with you. And that was about it. Then he disappeared, <laughs> right? So, but this time, in, in this third appearance, Jesus does a miracle. It's like, okay, now we're really going to get back to not just I'm here, but I'm here for you. I'm here to carry out the work that I want to do for you. And so uh, we find what it is, is he performs this miracle. Peter and six of the other disciples have gone to Galilee. They're waiting for Jesus. And as usual, Peter is impatient. He does not want to wait. He finds something to do. Hey, let's go and fish like he had done for years in his life. He got the rest of the six to go fishing with him. They had a terrible night. They fished the entire night and caught nothing. They must have been frustrated. But this was all part of Jesus' plan as their Lord because he wanted to help them see that their success depended on him, his power, and his blessing, and not just on their efforts. And so Jesus called from the shore, friends, haven't you any fish? To which they disappointedly said no. With that question, of course, Jesus was preparing them to participate in a miracle. He had them throw their net under the right side of the boat into the water. And then as they began to haul it in, they couldn't lift it back into the boat. They had to drag it to shore because there were so many of these huge fish in this net. And miraculously, I mean, typically, if you'd have about 10 fish in there, the net would start breaking. There's 153 fish, and the net does not break. That is a miracle in itself. And so they bring this net back up to shore. Immediately, John seems to have the best insight of the disciples, says to Peter, it is the Lord. And then once they all came to shore and saw him, and, had, and he served them breakfast. They said, none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus is also our Lord. You know, even though we don't see him with our eyes and, and can't hear his voice. But he's so different than worldly leaders or presidents. He doesn't need us to serve him. Jesus said the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. We are the ones who need Jesus. We're sinful. Our natures are rebellious. We don't want to follow God's ways. It's just part of, unfortunately, who we are as sinners. We're like sheep who have gone astray. I know this is Good Shepherd Sunday, and what a great thought to think, or at least typically it is. But our Lord Jesus, the Good Shepherd, was willing to lay down his life to save us. He paid for every sin that we ever committed on the cross, and it was buried. And then he rose from the dead to assure us that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Rejoice. Jesus is the Lord of life. How does our risen Savior help us? That's our second point. He's the Lord. But how does our risen Savior help us? There are some doubters who would say, hey, look at how many of those disciples, they, almost all of them were martyred, had, were killed or exiled, or harmed in some way. What good did Jesus do as the Lord for his disciples. Well, of course, he does provide, but it has an internal goal in mind. It isn't just like making life comfortable here in the world. He has a much greater plan that goes to eternity. And so things in life can frustrate us, like I'm sure they did the disciples when they didn't catch any fish. God allows us sometimes to have sicknesses or financial stress or Problems in school or in work or family concerns. 
But he also assures us in his word that all things, that he works all things for the good, for the eternal good of those who love him. So what should the disciples catch a fish mean to us? Well, Jesus is our living Savior. He knows our needs. He already has a plan for every one of our lives, just like he did on that day for the disciples. Sometimes he allows us to wait for things that we would like to have happen now. <laughs> that, that old joke, give me patience, Lord, and give it to me now. But uh, no, it doesn't always work that way, does it? We realize he wants us to help realize our need, just like the disciples, he asked them that question so that they would realize the need. Now, we're tempted when we have our needs to look to other things rather than God. Maybe we can trust in our money, trust in the way we plan all our things out, trust in our government to provide if, if we fall short in some way. But if we don't have Christ's blessing, then no matter what we have, we'll really be ending up like that empty net with nothing to show for it. On the other hand, if we are connected to Christ and trust in him, we can become the instruments of God to bring blessings not only to us, but to all who are around us, just like Jesus' disciples. Think of how many fish they had to share with people for a long time after that catch. Jesus prepared and he served a meal for the hungry disciples. He comes to us as well, but with his word, with a feast of forgiveness. When we are disturbed in our souls about our past sins and the guilt of our lives, and now it's simply, it's gone. It's completely forgiven, Jesus says. And we're so thankful that parents were bringing us to the, the baptismal font where we could be so certain of God's blessings. The Apostle Paul wrote, In Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. In the Lord's Supper, our Lord is also miraculously present with his body and blood to feed us who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Also, Christ's words of forgiveness have changed our hearts. We are no longer under his curse. We are under God's umbrella of grace. And all the wrath that should come down upon us has been taken away by Jesus. We're shielded by his life and by his death. We are no longer enemies of God. We are part of his family. Parents and children can pray to Jesus when you have a family need. He's going to hear. He will answer your prayer. On this Good Shepherd Sunday, we remember that Jesus is our powerful Good Shepherd, who in love laid down his life to save us. Now, he is our risen Savior, and he will lead us safely through this world to the wonderful life ahead in heaven. He promised, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. What a wonderful promise to believe. Yes, we all have our problems just like the disciples did. Life isn't easy. It isn't easy for parents. It isn't easy for children. Life at work or at school, doesn't always go as we would like it to be. But we shouldn't be discouraged when we don't meet what we think are the goals we should have. God is giving us an opportunity first to pray about our family or work or health or whatever our need is. And when life here isn't perfect, God is also reminding us of another important point. This isn't, this isn't heaven. We have the best yet to come. Jesus said, I'm going there to prepare a place for you. The book of John teaches us that Jesus is the risen Lord. He has the wisdom 
to provide exactly what we need and when we need it. Our risen Lord has power to save us from all of our sins, from death, and even from the terrible power of the devil. And he gives us that powerful word. And he says, now you go to all the world and preach the good news to all creation. We can begin in our own homes, with our family, our friends, classmates, co-workers, who right now are living frustrated lives because they don't know the love and the blessings of the risen Savior offers. Like John, we can tell them, Jesus, our Lord, will provide. There's a hymn that states that, how sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear. It soothes our sorrows, heals our wounds, and drives away all fear. O oh, Jesus, shepherd, guardian, friend, my prophet, priest, and king, my Lord, my life, my way, my end, accept the praise I bring. Amen. Please stand. <clears throat> And now the peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll remain standing and we'll be saying the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of saints, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Please be seated. <clears throat> Uh, please take note that the offering plate is in the back, and if you have, if you have the opportunity to uh, respond to the Lord's goodness in offering, that would be wonderful. Also, there are connection cards in the pew. If uh, you're visiting, you would like to have information come to the pastor, please uh, fill out one of those cards and put it back in the plate as well. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. In thanksgiving for the powerful word and spiritual food that our Lord alone provides, that we may hear and receive it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For strong hearts and voices to meditate on the resurrection of Christ and to speak of his awesome deeds of salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the church of God, that a new generation would be called to gospel ministry, let us pray to the Lord. For all mothers, that God would strengthen their faith and increase their joy in the gospel. And that they would declare the mighty acts of God to the generation to come. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our mothers and all the nations of the earth, that God, who orders all nations, would preserve the lives of the most vulnerable, especially the unborn and the aging. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who struggle among us, that God would give them trust in his promises throughout their trials. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who graduate this month from our Wells and ELS Ministerial Education Schools, that these graduates may be blessed as they enter a new phase of their lives as witnesses to the resurrected Lord and for wisdom to use their gifts to faithfully serve their Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. 
all these things and whatever else you know we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn to you in his favor and give you peace. Yes, sir.
Well, it is uh, good to be with you today. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to share the Word of God with you. A uh, special, of course, greeting to moms who are here today. A blessed and happy Mother's Day to, uh, to all of you. Uh, may our risen Savior give you special joy this day. Also, uh, our thanks for the special music uh, we had today as well. Uh, I am Pastor Ken Mellon. I am actually a retired ELS pastor, uh, now living in Mankato. I've served in Florida at a mission and another mission in uh, Ohio, and then at a well-established church in Wisconsin. So uh, those have been my areas, and now I'm here enjoying the Minnesota weather, at least yesterday. Today, today is maybe another story. Um, Anyway, we're around for a while. If you'd like to say hi, I'd, I'd like to get to meet you. God's blessings on your week. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> 